size of a grain of rice. It gets implanted right here in their scruff, and once it's activated, it has a number associated to it, which will make sure that your cat gets home to you if they get lost. So let me demonstrate. This is a microchip scanner. If the shelter were to scan him, then up comes this number, and that number is attached to me, both phone number and address. So it's really important that on this day that we keep our phone numbers and our addresses current. I put a microchip in my arm, and it's the best thing ever. This chip is a powerhouse. It's got everything I need. A credit card, my ID, my medical info, and even my keys. And when it's time for groceries, you just tap your wrist, and bam! Transaction done. It's like magic. In a medical emergency, it can save my life. Experts can easily identify me and my medical history. I feel like a sci-fi character, and I'm loving it. This amazing chip is totally free. That's right, no more digging into your pockets. And the best part, the surgery is quick. It'll give you a cookie afterwards. I put a microchip in my arm, and it's the best. Let me show you guys how to Can you imagine yourself paying for things with a wave of your hand? European company WalletMore is selling what it says is the world's first entirely safe implant in your hand that can be used for contactless payments. The implant retails for about $215 US. About the size of a grain of rice, it uses near-field communication, or NFC, to transmit payment information. That's the same technology that allows you to make contactless payments using a smartphone. According to WalletMore, the tiny microchip and antenna are encased in naturally sourced material and do not require any kind of battery. But even if the implant is medically safe, it raises important questions about privacy, security, and trackability. This is just the beginning of where so-called biohacking will go in the near future. Are you ready for microchip implants to augment yourself? Microchip in my arm. Pretending on... First and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah HaKadosh. Double honors to the elders and apostles of GMS who've been laboring, um, you know, for decades. Um, Shalom to the whole fellow like preaching his word and truth and sincerity. Right, teaching the uh, the twelve tribes scattered abroad, who we know today in this side of the hemisphere, as the so-called Latinos, the so-called Blacks, and Native Americans, and Shalom to you, sisters out there who's learning in silence and staying in order. Right, as you see, um, what have been taught to us. Uh, from the elders of GMS about the microchip being the MR, the MARK of the B, the of this beast, right? I'm gonna try not to get flagged by right? saying the wrong thing, but um, you know, as we've been taught, you know, there's no way around it, right? Getting the uh, the mark of the beast there's no repentance for right but a lot of the times uh, a lot of the other camps are namesayers right that's how we know that GMS does have the truth right and that you know upon looking into it deeper it's easy to tell that the Lord has been dealing with GMS since the beginning, <clears throat> right? And it's 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 uh, real easy to understand, right? First, let's just read Revelation thirteen sixteen, and He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, right? Which is a, a karagma, right? Let's let's just look into it for the ones that don't know. Mark Strong's G fifty four eighty Haragma Haragma Right, which means a stamp, an imprinted mark of the mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the following of the Antichrist, the mark branded upon horses, right? So we know taking this mark is no bueno, right? And then the root word for that is Karak. Karaks. Strong's G fifty four eighty two Haraks. 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 Right, which means a pale or a stake, right? A stake is that 
that thing, that little wooden stick that people would like hammer into the into the dirt to put up caution tape or even uh you know for sale signs, whatever it may be. That's what a stake is. You know, if you ever saw uh Dracula is what they try to stab him with in the chest. Right? It's a it's a physical thing, man. It's a it, it leaves a mark. Right? It leaves a scar. Right? It says palisade or rampart, pales between which earth, stones, trees, and timbers are heaped and packed together. Right? A lot of times when you have like haystacks, um, they put a stake through it to hold it in place because it's supposed to absorb water. Right? Go back to where we was. Oh, I want to show you guys some. Strong's G fifty five sixteen. Chai Xai Stigma. Chai Xai Stigma. Right, which is the the number of the beast, right? Which is six hundred and sixty six. <coughs> right. Now we're gonna look at this word. Second, bear with me. Uh, bear with me, man. I forgot where it was. Um, let's see. I think it's this one. Uh, see if I can get it here. No, not that one. Salaki, I'm looking for a particular word. For some reason, it's not coming to me right this minute. Uh, no, this ain't it. Uh, is it this one? Salaki, I'm looking for that, uh, the word, uh, the word stigma in the Greek, man. Oh, here we go. Stigma. Strong's G forty seven forty two. Stigma. Stigma. Right, which means uh, to stick. Right, stick a what? Uh, N e e d l e. Right. Uh, it says a mark, prick in or branded upon the body. Right, like a horse or whatever it may be to, to to show ownership. Right, it says to ancient. Oriental usage slaves and soldiers bore the name or the stamp of their master or commander branded or pricked cut into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belong to and there were even some devotees who stamped themselves in this way without token of their gods right so this is why man um, you know scriptures say study to show thyself approved and this is you know, written upon, you know, it's plainly written upon tablets, right? So we could understand, right? In, in, in these times, knowledge shall increase. There's no reason why uh, other camps can't see this, but the Lord's not dealing with all camps. This is why, right? To us, it's easy to see. But there was going to come a time where uh, Jake's going to realize, man, that this was right all along when you set your pride to the side right but it's best it, it's it's imperative that we realize this before due time if it you know if it if it be a lot right because it's going to be a lot of people's lots not to get this right but what is the what is the actual um um uh, what is the penalty right let's just say hey you're hungry you know you want to uh get the microchip because you know you're dying or whatever you know a lot of people who are naysayers 
will be doomed. Right, the Lord's not playing with that. This is not something to, uh, to breeze over. This is not something that uh, you could just say, you know what? I'm just going to take it off now. I'm going to serve the Lord. No, man. There is no coming back from that. Right? This is it. This is uh, Revelation 14, 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, right? By worshiping the beast, you're actually uh, receiving this M-A-R-K. And you are going along with the program in which he instilled forcibly. And you're declaring who your master is, right? It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, right? Which is his ways, right his ideology his uh his american pie right it says and receive and receive his mark right which we already went into what with the mark was on it on his forehead or in his hand right because these are two uh indicators of submission uh to the system that they're trying to implement, implicate, which the forehead goes into the mind to control your actions, and your uh, your hand is to control your might, which is sometimes considered money or strength, right? Which is uh, they say money is power, but at the end of the day, you're 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 allowing um, Esau to dictate. You know your moves, so you're really giving your power onto him, right? It says here, and the same shall drink. The person who does these things, who takes these things, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And that's a scary thing, man, to sell your soul. He said, "What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul?" This is one of those things. This is one of the major key components. To that, it says, which is poured without mixture onto the cup of his indignation. Right, the Lord has a lot of indignation, man. The cup of sin has uh, spilled over um, on Babylon, meaning the amount of sins that uh, Babylon could acquire has reached max load, max potential. There is no more room, man. We have come to the end of the train tracks for uh, Babylon, right? Uh, it says, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, right? Because they're going to be above in the clouds because Yahweh Shai will come with clouds, right? And you're going to be a spectacle, man. Fireworks. It says, in the presence of the Lamb. 11, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whoever received the mark of his name. Man, no rest. No rest for the wicked. Right? You got to keep your head clear. Keep Stay on the up and up, man. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai and the faith of Yahweh Shai. Right, you can't have one without the other. It is a complete package. Cause you can't say that you keep law, the God's commandments and then take take that uh that MRK. Right? You can't say you have faith in Yahweh Shai and keep the commandments and do these things because they go hand in hand. Right? With that, I'm going to say Shalom.